This is pretty great. This is actually the flap, the flap actuator here, and it splits. You have to have one to go over the top part of the wing, has a bit of the flaps, has a bit of flaps, and then aileron. And so it grabs up here, and that piece grabs the main inboard. And I guess this, that, the flaps are down right now, so it pushes out, pushes on that, and your flaps are down. This is pretty neat. Way back in the day, here's your pin. This actuator shoves the pin, that's the end of the pin right there. It goes into that hole and that locks it. And there's got to be something at the back. Don't tell me there's just the one pin. That's crazy. It's got this really neat little door to it. Like the front of the wing. One little piece has to pop out like that. Pop out first to make room for the wing to go. These are actually, and here's, this is neat looking at the bottom. The machine guns would be sticking out here. They used to stick out 350 caliber machine guns and the bullets, the bullets used to come out of these. So they would just drop the empty, uh, not the bullets, the, the casings, the empty casings after they were fired. Beautiful. And there's your split flap. It's got some, it has some mechanism for Pivoting weird. Quite a bit of engineering there. Tail is pretty big. She's beautiful. <laughs> This thing is brand new. You could eat off it. I'm not kidding. This airplane's brand new. They rebuilt every single piece of it. No. Well, the wires maybe are original, but every pipe in there is new. Here's a motor. A Russian plane.
the Thunderbolt. These things were considered pretty indestructible. They always came back. There's a fighter plane called the Jug. It took, had eight 50 caliber machine guns, which was a lot. in the way but nice shot so also in this place they have got a huge collection of models I think they have every aircraft built in Second World War there's more cases around this place as well but I can't really show you all of them it's there's too many you got sort of bigger planes and bombers on the bottom this is the US Air Force over here I should show you a whole bunch of them I'll make an effort I'll go down one side and up the other. I'll go all the way down along the bombers first. Because there's some really unique ones. Some really one off European stuff I don't think they made too many of. There are more models here than you could possibly shake a stick at. German bombers. I don't know what this six engine German thing, I don't think they built very many of those. Japanese. They're all Japanese. And then the second row in all these cases, I'll go along the top row, which are the fighter planes. And these, very diverse. The Japanese section here. Look at all the different planes. I mean, there's just at a ridiculous amount of planes. They had so many different planes. Japanese section. More Japanese. These are all different. There's so many different ones, I can't believe it. You know, whip over here. German section. So many different. Well, here's your rocket stuff at the end. The very first helicopters. There's a V2 and a V1 rocket. I think some of those are Polish. Look at all the different types. So many different companies were making so many different airplanes. These are Russian. section of Russian stuff British more British and American Wildcat, they sure built a lot of these. And this one looks brand new.
pretty great little display with a Jeep and an engine over there. They got a jug on the ground made from aluminum and then machined air-cooled engine and this is a single bank rotary engine radial engine and uh, this this is usually the front no Not on this one this is the back on this one and Jeep's got a little trailer Museum is so crowded. People everywhere. Pretty great little model. Here, a little chunk of the deck modeled. Very well done. This thing is so perfect you could eat off it. <laughs> like it's completely been restored. It's like fresh paint, I guess. They built thousands of these things. This little thing is at all the museums as well. Everybody seems to have a copy of these. The little Lynx trailer. This one's been very restored. I don't think they were all quite painted up like this. But this one's fun. Boy, it's mint. City aircraft, once they crossed the British coast and penetrated inland, tens of thousands of us. Something about the Spitfire is it really had narrow landing gear caused it a few problems But she sure is graceful Really hard to film in low light. I've had to develop a museum technique of filming in low light. One day I'll just buy a better camera. My technique is to move really slow. Super crowded museum. That guy over there, he works here. He's on patrol. I had a chat with him. Everything's okay.
Mustang's pretty skinny from here. This, this, I was here when they originally put it in, and there are some things changed. Yeah, there are some things that have changed. She's so much bigger than you'd think when you get right underneath it. The pilots love this airplane. They love the twin engines. Engine radiators are way back here. Supercharger, mechanical supercharger, gear reduction. And you can see where the casing split, right? From here to here, so this is one whole piece. <laughs> and from here to here, it's another slice. The front place and this big plate. That's really something. And here's all your gears to spin your mags. Wow. I have on an F4U Corsair. Kind of my favorite plane from the Second World War, I think. 